Look, if you've never seen one-on-one, -on -one, if you've never tuned into public broadcasting for this incredibly important show every night, tonight's the night because Darlene Love is in the house. <laughs> it just says here, music icon. Wow. But I got to tell you something. I first met you. Uh, our friends at the Montclair Film Festival, they premiered uh, 20 Feet from Stardom a few years back. Yes, a few. <laughs> yeah. Set that up for people. What was the premise of that movie? Well, you know, it was all wonderful. It's about backup singers mm. who back up any and everybody if you're good enough. You got to be and, good. And uh, I got this telephone call from Dick Donner, who was the director of the Lethal Weapon series, and one of my very good friends, Lou Adler, who was a great producer and still is. He just retired. Right. And uh, they called me and said, we want to do this movie, a documentary about background singers. And I told the producer, you have to call Darlene Love if you're going to do this. Right. And because we were singing, The Blossoms is the group I was working with at the time. But we, what we didn't know, black people weren't doing background then. It was all right? white singers. Background? And they were, background, and they were all readers. Bette Midler tells the funniest story about them because they used to stand there and go, <laughs> But then when we got in, we went, ooh. You changed it up. Changed it up. Do you mind if we show people 20 feet from Star? <laughs> oh, why not? It's Let's great. show a clip. It yes. came out a few years ago, but it's more important than ever now. Yes. There's a power to these women that stand on stage with these guys. It's a bit of a walk. That walk to the front is, is, is complicated. The rock and roll people like Bruce and Elton John and, and Stevie wanted to know who that girl singer was. My life has been all about trying to make a success of the gift that I had. It is my honor to induct into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and about time to Miss Darlene Love. I mean. <laughs> And who knew what I started out doing at 16, that all these years later, I would win a Grammy and an Oscar for a movie that I had been doing you all think my that was life. Possible? No, I didn't even reach for that star. Did I just, not. we was just a background group making a living. You come out of uh, Los Angeles, right? Los Angeles, You're California. You're a kid, start singing when? Uh, in church, my father was a minister and uh, five children. Mm. So when you are past, your father is the pastor, you are the church. Yeah, but when did they know that you had a certain kind of voice? I started singing in the choir. Uh, and uh, I think that's basically where we learn harmony from, singing in choirs, mm. uh, oohs and ahs uh, be behind the, uh, the person who was doing the lead. And then one day, this uh, conductor of the choir asked me to sing lead. And I was like, I don't sing lead. <laughs> I sing background. Mm. And she says, no, just try it. And I tried out the song and um, been singing lead ever since. I still love background, but mainly I came to the front. <sighs> you perform with so many greats. Springsteen? Yes. Elvis? Yes. Could you describe the Elvis experience? Wonderful. And it's all because of gospel. Elvis loved gospel music. Actually, his favorite music was gospel music. And when he found out we had that connection, he would just like, do you know this song? Do you know this one? And we'd go off and sing gospel music, but all what we call the hymns of the church. The hymns of the church. And, you know, like Amazing Grace and mm. all those songs. And he was just shocked that he found somebody really in this business to get close to that and knew all about gospel music. You know this clip we're about to show? You and Elvis. Elvis and the Blossoms with Darlene. 1968. That's 68. <laughs> yes. Did, mm. <laughs> How much fun? So much fun, so much fun. But when they were always looking for us, if we had a 50 minute break, go find Elvis and you'll find the Blossoms. <laughs> They're somewhere singing. And the one thing that I learned about Elvis, I don't think a lot of people know, probably Elvis fanatics know, mm. that he won three Grammys and they were all for gospel music. That was his thing. Yep. Name some other folks that had an influence, a significant influence on your career you got to work with directly. Sam Cooke. Oh, the great. Sam Marian Cook. Anderson, who was actually my idol, I idolized her because of my uh, gospel background. And I figured I was going to sing like her. Mm. She's a great, I called a folk gospel singer. Mm. Um, and of course, uh, Rita Franklin. I worked for Dionne Warwick as one of her backup singer for 10 years. And I learned so much from her just in the background, watching her work. Dion, what's it like for you today to be as hot as ever? sought after more than ever before, 
people want to know about your life and they want to hear you sing. What is that like for you, not just as a performer, just as a person who loves her art? Yes, that's the favorite word for me. I do love my art. I, I love pleasing my audiences more than I uh, do anything else because some of your fans come in, they don't feel good or they had a bad day or, you know, and I tell them I came to lift your spirits. Mm -hmm. And that is my joy to be able to do a 90 minute show and in that time touch people's hearts. Mm -hmm. That's the main thing. I'm not just walking out on the stage, okay, I'm getting paid, okay, let me do this show. That is never my intent. The minute I walk on the, sh on the stage, I'm, darling love, I'm theirs for that 90 minutes. Were you put on this earth to do this? I'm sorry? Were you put on this earth to do this? I do believe that. You do? It was a hidden thing, too, <clears throat> because the churches I came from are Pentecostal churches. Explain that to folks who may not appreciate well, Pentecostals that. Pentecostals are Christians that believe secular music is the devil's music. And you weren't allowed to go to movies, you weren't allowed to go to dances or participate in school activities if it had to do with singing or dancing. So uh, I thank God all the time for my father because he was one of those preachers that said, I don't believe this, but you guys can go to the show. Mm. And you have chaperones and you can go to the school function. You can do all these wonderful things. And that's how it actually started. So once I started singing, like secular music and they could see me, that's when the fight started because I did a television show in 1965 called Shindig. Shindig! <laughs> With all the dancing and the, yeah. Yes, it was the first rock and roll show. I was a little kid, show. but I do remember. Yeah, and it was all over, it was an in, uh, international show. Huge. And so people would tell my father, I saw your daughter Shindig, right? singing on that show. <laughs> <laughs> I saw your daughter, how do you allow her to how sing that music? How do you allow <laughs> And my father, what I loved about him, he would go, well, why were you watching it? <laughs> I love it, I love it. Hey, real quick, you're acting. Yes. Lethal Weapon. I did all four Lethal Weapons. All four? All four, I was the mother. You are Danny Glover's wife? Yes, Trish Murtaugh. Is acting as natural for you as singing? It had to become natural. Because Wait a minute. I know, I know what you're saying because saying because when I did, went to the, the set the very first time, I had met Dick Donner, the director already, yeah. and he was a very free man, you know, talking loud, he's just a fun guy. And I went in there and you know, I learned all my lines and I, I had an acting coach and I wanted to be perfect for this role. And he, the first thing he said was, I didn't hire y'all to be actors. <laughs> <laughs> I said, oh, Lord, I'm, I'm struck now. What am I supposed to do? Yeah. And what he was saying, I hired you to be yourself in That's this right. acting part. Well, before I let you go, you got a Netflix thing coming out? Yes, it came out Thanksgiving, Holiday Rush. Love it. And I told them I didn't want to play a mother or a grandmother. Too, so they made me an aunt. You're an aunt. Love it. <laughs> Darlene Love. Uh, we love having you here. Thank uh, you. You honor the public television world by being with us here at the WNET studio, and uh, we wish you nothing but good things in the future. Keep Thank making so people much. happy. Thank you. God, God bless you. Bless. Thank you. Same to you. <laughs> we'll be right back right after this. That's Darlene Love. <laughs> Perfectly orchestrated. In sync with your life. Hackensack Meridian Health is redefining how health and care come together. Because when everything works together, your world gets better. Hackensack Meridian Health, life years ahead. Also brought to you by the Northward Center, NJM Insurance Group. Serving New Jersey's drivers, homeowners, and business owners for more than 100 years. Investors Bank. And by Choose New Jersey. Our mission is attracting companies to the Garden State.